Hi everyone, it's me Emily. Today I'm showing five ways to decorate villager houses. I think these areas can be a bit tough, especially because we have 10 of them to do and I like mine all to be at least somewhat different, so hopefully this video can help with some ideas. I'm going to use Poppy's home today and the first idea I'd like to show is to place the house into its own secret little cove. This is nice because it separates the building into its own build and you can decorate this in any style you like. I'm creating some cliffs around her exterior. If you struggle with terraforming, I would say my best tip is that I think you can afford to be really bold. Um, especially with a cliff tool, you don't have to worry too much about making anything perfect. Just trust yourself and lay down some big sections of cliff and then you can come back through afterwards and refine them to your liking. In terms of shape, I focused on keeping the edges fairly close to the home and I kind of carved them in a way that left space for me to make a path through the centre. And I wanted to add some waterscaping. I just love having at least a little section of water on my cliffs and I adjusted the pathing slightly because I decided to extend the waterfalls on my round cliff into this loop. Once I got the pathing in place, I added some more water on the back edge and I'm now ready to start adding my decorations. My island has quite a natural theme going, so most of the items I'm picking today fall into that, but this type of build can be easily adjusted for any aesthetic you're doing. It wasn't ideal, but I did have to get rescued by the rescue services. Um, if you don't have a river right behind you, you could definitely just extend the cliffs back and then you'd have space to decorate. But yeah, as a note, if you ever get stuck like me, you could always call on the phone just to get dropped off somewhere else. I used some flowers and of course glowing moss is just so pretty. I chose the curved streetlight to go right at her entrance and then I just finished up with some more natural elements. And then this is how the final area looks. It's a really nice way to separate the house out a bit so I hope you like it. For my next idea I'm going to go really nice and simple just making her a themed front yard but I do have some tips for how I make this still feel really suited to my island. Firstly I think the pathing plays a big role in the vibe the area will have. I went with brick because it matches the colour of her roof, but I would suggest considering which one would work best for you. In general, I feel the dirt path leans towards a more natural look. The sand will give you a beach or tropical feel, and then the different tiles and wooden planks can create different sections of towns or cities. So have a look at them all and you can just pick whichever one you like the best. I made this into a pretty big area, but I've done front gardens like this on previous islands that were way smaller. Some fencing will work really well to section this out into her own personal space and that's especially effective if you're planning to put a few villager houses near each other and want them each to have their own section. For the decorations I looked to her house and because she has a red door and white tiling I kept those as my colour theme and then let that inspire the items I chose. However you can also do the furniture based on what your villagers like. For example normal villagers might enjoy a garden to read in whereas you could give the jock villagers a space to work out in. Also remember, if you have the Happy Home Paradise DLC, you can change villager exteriors so you can make the house suit your style a bit more. Here is a finished area. This is good if you need something that you can make easily for all 10 villagers, so I hope it helps. The next idea is going to be a community garden. Poppy is the only villager I have here, but I think this would be cool to extend over a few houses so that all the villagers can help take care of the garden. I really liked how the wood partitions looked placed in front of her house, but you can use fencing or simple panels there as well. And then I'm just focusing on using a lot of the plant items like the cacao tree or the monstera, and then I'm mixing those in with the actual plants like the crops and flowers. For me, I want the area to look really natural, so I'm trying not to add too much symmetry and mainly choosing brown and white items. However, if you have a different aesthetic going on, maybe something like kid call, you might want to try making the build more symmetrical. Also, if you're doing kid call, definitely use the Mario Kart flower item. It's so cute and I used it loads on my kid call island and I'm just such a big fan of it. I focused on mixing the furniture items in with my pathing and crop sections. There's a lot of garden furniture to choose from and I thought that the greenhouse was a good choice and the flower bed from the Nook Mile Rewards worked in this area too. I added some pathing leading up to the house and then a few shrubs and a gyroid was an absolute must. I mean, you bury them in the ground so I guess they really should count as a crop. And then this is how the finished garden turned out. I like this one a lot. Next I'd like to show you another build that I think would be especially effective if you have quite a few houses together and that's to turn them into a fishing village. Poppy's house is already near a river and pond but you could add some more waterscaping if you want to. 
I wanted to keep to the in-game pathing for all of these ideas because I know not everyone has access to Nintendo Online, but I really do believe the Island Designer app is a great addition to Animal Crossing, and just with this you can make some really cool things. Definitely play around with circles like this if you want a different feel to just straight pathing. I made the path lead to the pond and then added some bamboo trees, but if you have multiple homes together then you can place the pond as a central gathering spot for all your villages. Now I'm coming through with my furniture. The concept I had in my head is you can make a village where everyone fishes for a living and then sells their catches, so I used market stools, fishing rods and then a lot of the actual fish from the game to decorate. One of my favourite details was the manhole cover. I had Cyrus customise it to have a boat design and it's super unique and fits the build really well. I also like how different fish have different containers because it means you can stack them to create more interesting shapes. I found a lot of the prizes you win from the fishing tiny really useful for this build and it did make me think that you might be able to do something similar but for bug catching if that would interest you more. And here we are, this is how the finished area came out. My next idea is all inspired by the fact that so many people like to keep the villager houses on their beaches. I think that's mainly done because it means you have more space on your island to decorate, plus I think it's nice to give your villager a seaside home. I'm using a lot of the sand pathing for this, but of course if they're already on the beach then you wouldn't need to do that. Beach homes are also great because I feel you can make any theme you have work. For my island I'm making this into a fairy core style by using a lot of pink and white furniture, but the sand pathing also lends itself to bright colours so you can pick what's going to work best for you. And then just in case you didn't know, if you have sand pathing on land, you can plant coconut trees, which I feel are pretty essential for this design. I gave her a lifeguard chair for safety and a surfboard that I got in Nook's Cranny. Then Poppy needs somewhere to come and relax, so a hammock under the shade of a palm tree would be perfect. It just wouldn't feel right if I didn't include bubbles somewhere in this build, so I hid the machine behind the shell partition so that I'm just left with floating bubbles, which is really fun. Now, I decided to cut back quite a lot of this pathing, as I found I preferred the build with a bit of grass poking through. If you're making something like this on the beach, you can either get a grass custom design to use, or just ignore this. But yeah, I think while I was doing it on land, that's why I decided to make patches of sand and grass together, instead of just a big block of sand, if that makes sense. If you're going to have one custom design on your island, I would so urge you to get a turtle. I bet you can draw one if you don't have Nintendo Online and it will be 100% worth the effort because then hopefully you have the shell stool recipe. I think this is one that comes out of balloons during the summer but I may be wrong on that. But yeah, if you make a shell stool, you can place it over the design and we get a 3D turtle friend that I am just obsessed with. I want to put these all over my island. I really, really like it. I'm starting to finish out this build with some flowers and also dropping shells for some more depth. A bit more fencing and a cruiser bike were my final touches and here is how this idea turned out. Okay, so those were my five villager house exterior ideas. I really hope they can give you some inspiration if you've been struggling. Let me know in the comments what other spaces you'd like ideas for and whilst you're there maybe give me a like and consider subscribing. With that let me thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!